All right, everybody, I'm very excited about this. Welcome back to Binary Adventure. We're going to cover the legendary Rad Air debugger now. Um, I love debugging, so this gets me uh, all excited. So what we're going to do is start out by jumping right into it. We're going to um, do r 2 d dot slash wonderful. Remember, that's the program that prints the word wonderful to the screen between three and 10 times. I think we changed it from 10 to three in the last video. So uh, this is gonna launch the debugger. Radar is telling us that it launched the process, gave us the process ID, and it told us that it attached the process, gives us the base address of where it's loaded, and it gives us the uh, bitness, which is 64 bit. So if we just go ahead and dive right in uh, with capital V, hit enter, just like we usually do and then hit lowercase p. We're now at the disassembler view. However, we're debugging, so we should go to the debugger view. So we hit lowercase p one more time, and now um, here, this is the stack, okay? Now your stack's gonna be smaller by default. It's gonna be like four lines uh, big. I, I made mine bigger, and I'm just gonna explain how to do that real quick, because I like to have uh, more stack information at my on my eyes. So um, in order to do that, Look here at the bottom left, you hit colon to open up the prompt, you type E space, and then you put stack dot size, and then you say equals, and then you say 256, and you hit enter. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you, so it goes by bytes, not by lines. So this is 256 bytes right here. Um, if you wanted half of this, you could do 128 instead, okay? Um, and then there's actually a config file you could place that in if you don't wanna have to do that every single time you launch. Uh, Rad air, but we'll cover that in another video or something. So, but that's how you do that. So the stacks up here, then you have your registers. Uh, you probably are used to this from other debuggers, which are all set to zero right now, except for uh, RIP, RSP, and the R flags. Um, and then you have your instructions here. So you already have quite a bit of stuff. And remember, you can you can move to other views uh, to get hex dumps and things as well. Um, it turns out Red Air actually su does support a like multi-pane view, sort of like uh, Tmux or um, how, how you can do in other types of debuggers and even in other programs, almost like IDA, where you can have multiple windows. So Red Air does support that. I'm not using that here. I don't actually use those um, for the most part because this is usually enough information for me, but I can probably put the link in the description. Um, it will explain to you how you could like paint out all of these different you know, areas like the stack and the heap and the registers and the instructions and make it look more like Ollie debug or like Evans debugger or something on Linux, right? So um, I just wanted to explain to you what you were looking at. Now, if you want to do a step, what you can do is you could press F7, just like in other debuggers. And then, uh, so that's a step into, a step over would be F8. So I'm gonna hit F7 once. And um, you can see now that we have sort of begun executing and so what i'm going to do now is hit f7 again and you can see where rip is right here okay so wherever rip is or obviously the address in rip itself here is where we're at so i'm going to hit f8 now to skip over that call and you can see i'm hit f8 again hit f8 again hit f8. so it's just like any other assembly debugger right it allows you to just step right through everything. You can see the state of the registers right here. You can see the state of the stack right here. Um, however, right now we're kind of in some boilerplate code. We don't really know where we are, what's going on. So why don't we go ahead and do our uh, our handy uh, colon, AFL, list all of our functions, uh, which we can't list because we haven't analyzed the binary, remember. So let's go ahead and analyze the binary. So I'm gonna do AAA, um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do AFL now. And so now we can see here that main is here. So what we wanna do now is uh, break on main. So to, to insert a breakpoint, you can type the db command. So you're just gonna type db main. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna type, in order to basically get to main, um, we're gonna type dc. And that stands for continue. So the way that uh, Rad Air works, like I said in, in previous videos, is there's various modules. The D module is a debugging module, okay? So if you hit D question mark, you're gonna see your debugging commands here, high level, and then you can start going down each one. So I could say DB question mark, and now it's gonna show you all your DB commands. See, toggle breakpoint, enable breakpoint, remove breakpoint, 
uh, add breakpoint, uh, you know, run command at breakpoint index. So it's really cool because uh, Red Air supports the ability to almost like script. You can run commands uh, when a breakpoint is hit, and you can you can basically auto step through a program or a loop until a certain condition is met and stuff like that. Um, that's advanced. So we'll cover that in another video, but. So anyway, what I wanted to show you is that you could do that. So what we want to do here is if I just type DB, that's going to tell us where the breakpoints are. So uh, you can see that we only have one breakpoint, the one that we set at main. If I type DB by some symbol or address, you know, OX whatever, or, uh, you know, address main, it's going to insert a breakpoint there. So if I type DC, uh, the C stands for continue, the D stands for the module. So we're going to do DC. And now it says we hit the breakpoint there, which is main. So let's go ahead and uh, view that, right? So you can see here now we're in main. And you want, you want to step through main. See main is setting up the uh, stack. It's pushing RBP. It's pushing uh, RBX. And uh, it's getting ready to run, the, run our main function here. So it looks like I just... And I'm stepping through some of the lines. Let's see, I'm going down. Um, so let's go ahead and do DC again. Actually, accidentally entered a comment there. Um, sometimes I do that because the colon is the same key as the uh, comment key. So uh, I'm going to do DC one more time. And then it printed out our, our three wonderfuls. And it's done. Okay. So now the question is, how do we restart this? Let's say we want to go back. Uh, you type the command DO. So uh, what DO does is it um, reopens and then reattaches to the program. And so now let's say like right now we're kind of lost, right? We don't really know where we are and what we're doing. So um, I went back to visual mode here, but let's say we, we don't, we go somewhere else. You know, we're, we're scrolling down here. So the difference now is, is that this, the seek area, this is not necessarily where we are in the program. This is not IP. This is not the instruction pointer. If we need to get back to IP, we can't just go back to the seek because we're, this is not IP. This is where our cursor is, where we're looking. So in order to get back to IP, all you got to do is, uh, is uh, let's see hit the dot, hit the dot button. So in order to get back to IP, you hit period on the keyboard. It takes you right back. So see, we scroll down or away, we hit period, we're back. We scroll down again, you know, our, our seek is somewhere else. We hit period, our seek right here. It now matches our IP right here, okay? So you can see that's how you do that. So it's very useful to get back to our IP. So this time, instead of stepping into that column, I'm going to step over it using F8. Um, so I stepped over it there. We continue through the program here. So um, one thing, let's do this. Let's actually go and restart the program again. And then we're going to step into that call. Unless there's another call. Let me see if there's any more calls um, down here. Oh, there is another call. Okay. So we're going to go to this next call here and then we're going to do something. We're going to step into the call and it's like, oh, well, I don't want to be in this call anymore. So um, how do I get out of that call? So we're, you know, we want to do like a sort of like a step out or a, a step into return, that kind of thing here. Um, so the way to do that is to type the command dsf so you're going to hit colon dsf and that stands for um step until end of frame step frame basically or end of function so you type that and then now we're, we're out of the function basically um and we can go ahead and, and keep stepping through the rest of the program so so um that should get you started pretty well on the uh, the Red Air debugger. Um, you know, I've shown you how to start a program. I've shown you how to step 
into, step over, step into F7, step over is F8. And you can do these things using the command line too, using the colon. So like if you if you want to do that uh, without using those hotkeys, just type DS question mark and it will show you uh, all the commands to do these types of steps. Step back, step into all this kind of stuff, okay? And then there's, there's a step back because there's actually uh, reverse debugging that you could set up. But we don't have that set up right now. But you basically start recording and then you can step backwards, which is really, really cool. So, um, so yeah, that, that's how you do that. Or if you just want to see like more about the debugger module, hit D question mark, um, and you can kind of investigate some of these other areas. Um, but we've taught you how to start the file up with the debugger enabled. We've taught you how to step. We've taught you how to um, modify your stack so that you have more information available to you. Um, we, we've taught you how to, um, you know, change into debug view mode. And we've also taught you how to restart the program if you need to. So um, using those, all of those uh, commands, you should be able to do uh, a pretty, pretty decent debugging now. Um, I think, I think Red Air is actually going to be implementing um, or has like an experimental source level debugging too now. But um, in this video, we're just covering the assembly level debugging. So I hope you found this useful um, to get you started. And we might make more debugging videos in the future to co cover other subjects. Uh, but if you... If you'd like to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon. Take care. Thank you.